Hi everyone, I'm Amy Yu, a PhD candidate at UNC. As an Energy Data Analytics Fellow, today I'm glad to share our latest work, collaborating with Xijing, Andrew, and Noah, which models the climate energy equity nexus based on higher resolution data improved by machine learning and remote sensing techniques. Climate change is posing increasingly urgent challenges to our society. Every day, we make warnings about so many adverse climate impacts. The question is, how do we adapt to the situation? We stay indoors and use energy for space heating and cooling, which is critical for living needs and physical health. However, until today, the lack of affordable, reliable, and resilient energy services is still troubling U.S. populations. According to our previous study, on average, nearly 20% of U.S. populations are experiencing high energy burdens, which means this profound and blunt national social issue still deserves more in-depth studies. However, existing energy datasets are limited in spatial and temporal resolution, thus hindering the discussion on energy inequity, which motivates us to improve energy equity data using machine learning and remote sensing techniques to better identify disparities. To do so, we use this research framework, where baseline energy data is from EIA, combined with nighttime light data, land surface temperature data, and other ACS social demographic factors as key inputs. Our candidate model mainly include tree-based random forest, extra boost, and assembled model auto gluon. The last one is proved to be more stable across years and scales and improves the R squared from 0.4 to 0.7, which makes us to use auto gluon to predict our products at monthly track level. Here, we report our model predictions, taking 2018 as an example. The average monthly consumption is about 1,000 kilowatt hours in the summer and 900 in the winter. The average bill is about $140 in summer and $120 in the winter. North Dakota and the U.S. Southeast always have higher consumption and bills. Such spatial and temporal patterns seem to be consistent with our intuition, but we still don't know the accuracy of predictions, which requires us to compare our results with other track-level energy datasets, such as the lead data tool. A way to validate our results is to plot this error map with the overestimated areas in red and underestimated areas in blue. Overall, the average error is about 14% and the R square is 0.7. Based on the improved energy data, we can calculate electricity affordability gap, which is defined as the gap between electricity bills and 3% of household income. This map shows most areas have zero gaps during spring and fall, while in the winter and summer, we can see high gaps in most areas due to heating and cooling demand. The inability to afford electricity bills may result in a total of $30 billion gap, which is huge. Our second objective is to model the potentially nonlinear relationship between climate indicators and energy vulnerabilities. Our hypothesis is that cold and hot weather may increase energy inequality and construct this statistical model for analysis. Will EAG note the electricity affordability gap? HI is the heat index, which is calculated from temperature and relative humidity and can reflect the temperature people can actually perceive. So it may be a better metric to capture the changes in energy consumption behaviors than outdoor air temperature. By including control variables and fixed effects within a semi-parametric model, we can find that households tend to face challenges with heating bills when apparent temperatures drop below 34 degrees Fahrenheit and cooling bills become unaffordable when exceeding 72. Notably, we can find that the left side is steeper. A larger slope indicates heating costs may increase exponentially with temperature decreases, leading to potential policy implications on heating electrification. Finally, is key takeaways. First, our model largely improves the spatial and temporal resolution of energy equity data. Second, we can find that large electricity affordability gaps appear in both winter and summer. Third, there is a nearly U-shaped relationship between heat stress and the electricity affordability gap, with 34 to 72 being the affordable zone, and electricity bills become unaffordable when temperatures are beyond this zone. These are our references. Thank you, that's all. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions.